Hey everybody, and for today's little lab challenge, we're going to be working in Pivot Interactives, and the uh, this is what's called a ballistic pendulum. It's a pendulum because it swings back and forth, and it's ballistic because we shoot something into it. Okay, so a ballistic pendulum uh, gets something shot into it, and either that thing bounces or sticks, and then it swings up in the air based off what gets shot into it. So let's see. Let's just take a look. There it is. It's really hard to see this initial part because it's moving so fast, but basically a little pellet gets shot out of this air cannon and it sticks to this pendulum and then the pendulum swings up in the air based on the momentum from the pellet getting put into it. Okay. So our ultimate goal is, uh, based off of whatever we can measure here, uh, is basically being able to solve for the initial velocity that the pellet gets, or the marble in this case, we're calling it a marble, that the marble gets shot out of the cannon with, okay? So the, uh, yeah, let's just kind of break it down a little bit. Things that we can measure, let's see, we can measure, the only things that we'll really need for this part of the experiment are these two, the protractor to be able to measure angle, and the vertical ruler, because we want to be able to measure the, uh, the length of the string. Okay. So those are the things. Uh, the horizontal ruler and the stopwatch will get used in part two. All right. But yeah. For, so that's what we have. So let's kind of take a look at this problem. So I'm going to full size this. Scoot this over a little bit. So here we have just kind of the three main most important parts of this. We have before the collision. So in this, the marble would be, you know, somewhere in the air having just been shot out. So maybe we put the marble like right there or whatever, right? Then we have after the collision, you would be able to see the marble just kind of stuck to the pendulum right there. So it's just starting to move. It's after the collision. And then up at the highest point, uh, this whole string has rotated, or the rod, this is a rod, it's rotated, right, a certain degree, and it's raised up in vertical height. And so these are kind of the three most important parts. And what we're going to do is, there's a bunch of pieces to this, and what you're going to find is as we start getting into more complicated physics problems, you're going to take a complex problem, and you're going to break it up into smaller, simpler physics problems, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this first part. This is going to be step one. And step one is basically to find velocity after the collision. Okay. Step two will use all of these. Right. And step two will be to find the actual thing we're trying to solve for. Step two find initial velocity of marble. Okay, so there's two really important, I'm gonna go down to my little simpler drawing here. All right, these are our three most important parts. It gets shot out, they collide, and then that raw, that pendulum swings up in the air. So there's two really important parts happening to this. There is a change in height, which lets me know that there's a conservation of energy type problem happening, right? It goes from moving to con to a change in height. So it goes from kinetic to gravitational energy. The other piece, and that would be the kind of the step one piece. The other piece that's here is the, what we called up above, we call that the step two piece. And that is a collision which lets me know that if there's a collision, uh, we're probably going to be setting this up and looking at it through the lens of conservation of momentum. So we are trying ultimately to figure out what is this initial velocity, and then we're gonna kind of work our way back from that. So I'm gonna start by using conservation of energy because think about conservation of momentum. I need to know its velocity. If, I, if I'm trying to solve for its velocity before the collision, I need to know what is its velocity after the collision, 
right? I can use conservation of energy to possibly figure that out. So let's approach this, right? So the first part, I'm going to set this up with conservation of energy. So let's see if I can just copy that part. Maybe I don't need to because I thought ahead and forgot I put pictures here, right? So this thing is a picture of our setup. We got the marble that's been stuck to the side. Just draw a little red dot to make it easier to see. This thing is starting to move, okay? So it's already been shot and it's already hit and collided with the pendulum and now it's moving. So what we would have is, if I'm thinking conservation of energy, I have all of this movement, so I have kinetic energy, and that's going to be equal to over here where it changed its vertical height. So that would be a gravitational potential energy. And so if I look at the equations now, right, I can plug in the formulas for these things. I know that the kinetic energy is one half mass of the whole system, the, that would be mass of the marble and the pendulum combined. So mass times the velocity squared, we'll call that after, squared, equals mass of the whole system, marble and pendulum together, right, times g times the final vertical height that it was at. And so if it was originally, you know, if you just drew a line across here, if it was originally down here, then that little height right there would be what the Y is. So we got to figure out what is that Y. Okay, so now is where a little math trick comes into play. And this is one of the big reasons why I wanted to have this video. Because um, we haven't seen a trick like this yet. So... If, let's say, I'll use green here. This whole length of this string is L. L for length, okay? And over here, that whole, I keep calling it a string, but it's a rod, right? But uh, that is still L right there. Okay, hopefully we can see that. Um. So I need to figure out, so that's the original one, and the new one goes to here. All right? The original L was all the way down there. The new L, it takes me to there. So what I'm trying to do is figure out what is this difference? Right, So if I can take this original length L and subtract whatever this new one is, whatever this new little length here is, that will give me this difference. Okay, So that would be the original length L minus, and just make this into a triangle. Right, I got my angle right here, theta. This is my right angle. This L is the hypotenuse. Right? So if I want to find what this missing side is, if I want to find out what this little, little piece is, this would be L cosine of theta because it's adjacent to my angle. Right? So this would be L minus L cosine theta. And that's going to give me whatever that difference right there is. Take the big one minus this one, and then whatever I have left over is that piece right there. That's how high up the block raised. And I can take this just one little step further. There's, you notice there's an L in each term, so I could say I could factor out that L and say 1 minus cosine of theta. Okay. So from there, now I can plug that into the height because now I have it in terms of things I can measure. I can actually measure what the length of the string is using the ruler. I can actually measure what the angle is using the protractor, right? So that's the only reason we did this. Um, the, let's see. 
So this would be one half mass velocity after squared, and that's after the collision, that's why we call it that. Times mass times g times L one minus cosine theta. Okay, now we are trying to find the velocity after the collision. So how fast is it going right after it hits that pendulum? So now we just need to get this uh, V after isolated, right? We are trying to solve for what is this, right? So one little trick, the masses on both sides, those will cancel each other out. They're the same mass. And now we just go ahead and rearrange the variables so that it says V after, let me get it back in white, Velocity after the collision is equal to, I would multiply the 2 over, and then I would square root to get rid of that squared, and this would be my velocity after the marble hits the pendulum, okay? So you can plug in all of your values. L right there is length of the... length of the rod, right? Theta right there is the angle the rod makes with the vertical. That means, you know, if my rod goes like this, it's the angle my rod makes with the our little imaginary vertical line. Remember, G is just the pole of gravity. All right. And so what we have now is we have the velocity after. So if you think back to our, let me go up and grab this thing. We now have velocity after. That's what using conservation of energy does for us, right? And so now you're going to set this up using conservation of momentum. So this would now be the step two, okay? And step two is going to be, okay, conservation of momentum. Uh, the sum of all objects in your system, the sum of all their momentums initially, and set those equal to the sum of all of their, the objects in your system's momentum at the end, after the collision, okay? So this would be before collision. This would be after the collision. Okay, so that is where I'm going to leave you to it. Uh, just don't forget, after you do this, actually when you're plugging all of your stuff in, just remember our standard units. Uh, when we look at this equation, you got to make sure all of your units agree, right? Gravity is 9.8. Meters per second squared, right? That has meters in it. So that means the length you use for the length of the rod needs to also be in meters. All, the, all of our units should agree with each other. This theta should be in degrees. Uh, and then now that we're doing momentum, because the equation for momentum has mass in it, let's make this, right? P equals mass times velocity of an object. Mass is usually in kilograms. So make sure the masses all get uh, converted into kilograms. Okay, and remember there are 1,000 grams for every one kilogram. Kilo being 1,000. All right, so uh, what I was getting ready to say is don't forget after this part, take a picture of all your work submit that into the pivot and then there is a part two where you're going to submit your picture it's going to lock that first section and then the next section is actually going in with a high-speed camera and actually being able to measure with tools 
what the actual velocity is and then just getting a percent difference. It'll be a little different and that's okay. Um, yeah, all right. So I will help you out in class.